I suffer from something which is called profound or prolonged or complicated or complex grief disorder. Now the way that that shows itself is that you don't have the same kind of experiences of grief that the majority of people have. So you will find that you still tend to have very extreme emotions over the death or regarding the person who's died. And that will last from anywhere from six months onwards. And in my case, it's currently been about eight years. You don't have any joy in life. You lose any interest in hobbies, for example. Uh, life's completely gray. There's no elements of color in it you will very often decide to divorce yourself from the people and the loved ones that have been surrounding you. So you tend to go into a much of a hermit type existence. It's really not living at all. It's an existence. For me, I think that the way in which I really discovered that I had this, because I, I didn't think I had anything wrong. I just thought this is what happens. You know, everybody suffers this kind of thing. I thought it was slightly more extreme than most people had, but then I was much closer to my wife than a lot of people are to, to their spouses. It really came out for me that another relationship that I had broke down because there was three people in that relationship. And I was getting to the point of, there really is no point in doing this any longer. I have spent a long time considering my relationships, not only the ones that I have now, the ones that I, I had with my wife, with my parents, relationships that I had as a child, I realised that I exhibited this disorder in my childhood when my grandmother died when I was about seven. And for a couple of years, my mother would come and find me and I would be in my bedroom with photographs of her or London where we, we holidayed, spread out on the floor and I would be sobbing incontrollably. And then after about two years, that stopped completely. And what my childhood brain had done was it had, it had taken all of the emotions and locked them away. With other people, they do need to see a grief counsellor, a grief therapist. One of the things that can be helpful is to record the day of the person's death and replay it over and over and over again. And what that then allows you to do is to understand that you can listen to the grief, you can feel the grief, but then you can put it down and you can walk away from it. One of the things I've noticed having had this, this disorder for this period of time is that in this country, we simply do not know how to handle grief. We don't have a vocabulary for it. I was at a funeral of a friend and I saw somebody else there that I hadn't seen for a very long time. And I went to say, it's lovely to see you. And I thought, well, you can't say that if you're at a funeral. We don't have a language that we can use. People do not have a way of showing their understanding of grief. And so what a lot of people will do is they ignore the person who's grieving. They ignore the, the grief element. And I can understand that because they, they, they desperately don't want that person to you know, break down in tears or anything. I think we are, we are still a very reserved country in that respect. But one of the things that I've found very helpful, and it's one of the things I try to do now, is just to say something. 
because it, it, what you say to the person who's grieving doesn't really matter. It's the fact that you are saying something, you are acknowledging the suffering that they have got, that they are going through.